Former Minneapolis police officers expected to stand before a judge today charged with murder. Mohammed Noor was charged yesterday in the July shooting of Justine Damon. Damon had called 911 minutes before she was shot about a possible sexual assault behind her home. A criminal complaint says both Noor and his partner, Officer Matthew Harity, had pulled guns before Damon approached them. Only Noor fired, though. Mary McGuire live outside the Hennepin County Jail with more of what we know and the reasoning behind a relatively unusual murder charge against a police officer. Mary? That's right, Jason. Officer Mohammed Noor, he has lived life as a free man until Tuesday when he turned himself in to authorities. This case has taken many twists and turns in recent months, but this morning we are getting a clearer picture of exactly how and why those charges were brought about. Now, it's been eight months exactly since uh, that night in South Minneapolis when Justine Damon was shot and killed, and yesterday Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman announced his charging decision in this case. After calling a grand jury, Noor was charged with one count of 30 degree murder and one count of second degree manslaughter. Freeman says Officer Noor did not act re reasonably in his actions and abused his authority to use deadly force. Officer Noor did not act reasonably, did not act objectively reasonably, and abused his authority to use deadly force. He reaches across in front of his partner, shoots a gun at an object that he can't see. That's evidence of a depraved mind, in my view. Now, Nora refused to talk to investigators, so most of the crucial information in that criminal complaint comes from his partner, Matthew Harity. Harity claims both he and Nora got spooked when Damon approached their squad car in that alley. He pulled his gun to his rib cage right before Noor reached across him and fired one shot. Now that court document does shed a lot of light on the final moments of Justine Damon's life. Holding a gunshot wound to her stomach, Damon's last words were reportedly, I'm dying or I'm dead. Both of those officers did perform CPR, but she did die in that alley, Jason. Mary, we've mentioned that officer, now former officer Noor has not spoken out, but I know you have a statement from his attorney. That's right. He has not said anything. He would not even talk to investigators in this case, but we do have a statement from his attorney. Officer Noor's attorney is Tom Plunkett, and he said this in a statement, saying in part, the facts will show that Officer Noor acted as he had been trained and consistent with established departmental policy. The Minneapolis Police Union is not commenting on the specifics in this case either, but said in a written statement, we recognize the tragic shooting of Justine Damon has greatly impacted not only her family and friends, our membership, but also our community. The union will be waiting for the case to move on before making any statements. Again, MPD did fire Noor once those charges were made public. Damon's family also released a, a statement from Australia saying that no charges can bring her back, but they demand accountability for the reckless killing of fellow citizens that they are sworn to protect. All right, Mary, thank you. Janae Harto was police chief when the shooting happened. She resigned after criticism for her response. Yesterday, shortly after charges were announced, Mayor Jacob Fry, along with new police chief Madeira Arredondo, made a public apology to Damon's family and loved ones. I will learn from this tragedy and I will redouble our department's efforts to build trust and hold ourselves accountable, not only to those we serve, but to each other as well. Chief said he's committed to making sure the department learns from this tragedy and he said, de-escalation training will continue. Now, last night, dozens of people came together in the southwest Minneapolis neighborhood where Damon was killed. That's right. Allie joins us now with the reaction to the charges. Good morning, Kim and Jason. Some people who live in that neighborhood say police need new training and new rules to follow and new guidelines. They say their sense of safety and security has been shattered. You feel like you don't want to call 911. You feel like you don't want to walk in the alley. You feel like you, you don't know who to trust and you don't want to ask for help. Those neighbors were joined by activists who have been fighting for justice for years. Members of the Minneapolis NAACP, Justice for Jamar, Citizens United Against Police Brutality and other groups were in the crowd. They offered support for Justine Damon and asked for continued support against a system where black men have often been victims of excessive force by police. Stand here today surprised but glad that charges have been filed against Officer North. Yes. And in the same breath, I feel heartbreak and anger for all the families and all the victims that have not experienced this sort of justice. The mayor of Minneapolis was at that rally last night. So were members of 
City Council. Council member Lene Palmasano said it was very troubling to hear from the county attorney that he felt some Minneapolis police officers were not cooperative. She said she looks forward to having some conversations with Police Chief Madeira Arredondo about all of that. Kim and Jason. All right, Allie, thank you. And do stay with WCCO for continuing coverage as we learn more about the charges against Mohammed Noor. For the first time in nearly 20 years, the University of Minnesota will have a new men's head hockey coach next season. Yesterday, Don Lucia announced that he was stepping down after 19 seasons. It's been a rough last few seasons on the job since the Gophers switched to the Big Ten Conference. The Gophers have not made the NCAA tournament two of the last three seasons. Lucia leaves as the program's all-time winningest coach and helped guide the Gophers to two national championships. Like, what do I want to do in the next phase? You know, do I want to be 65 years old and go into rink every day, or do I want to be 65 years old and have more time with my wife and my grandchildren and, you know what, go to her mic game on a Saturday morning? So I, th I think all these come into play, uh, but I, I, it's like I've, I've been so lucky and fortunate to do what I've done. Lucia will remain with Gopher Athletics as a special assistant to athletic director Mark Coyle through June of next year. Now the question is who will take over. Some names to be considered include St. Cloud State coach and former assistant to Lucia, Bob Motzko. Current assistant Mike Gensel and former player, now head coach at Northern Michigan, Grant Patoni. A new coach will likely be named in the next month.